Creating a dynamic distribution group is a little bit different from creating a new distribution group and that's because the dynamic distribution group has filters that define the conditions that individuals need to meet in order to be placed within the dynamic distribution group. And so as users meet those conditions or perhaps fail to meet those conditions, they are added or removed from the dynamic distribution group. So you might say, well, what kind of conditions? If we select New Dynamic Distribution Group, here we can see the New Dynamic Distribution Group wizard. We can choose the organizational unit that we wish to place this distribution group in. We give it a name. Let's say Dynamic Distribution Group 1. And we click Next. Now here's where we define the filter settings. For one thing, we can filter based upon a specific part of Active Directory. So for now, it's everyone in the user's container, but we can change this to organizational units or other containers that we wish to apply this distribution group filter to. Now it says include these recipient types. At this point, we have all recipient types, but we could choose to exclude or include certain types in the following list. We might exclude mail-enabled groups. We might exclude resource mailboxes. So we would only check the ones that we think should be part of this filter. Or if we feel that all recipient types should be included, we would just go back to the default setting here, all recipient types. If we click Next, we're taken to a set of conditions. Now these conditions might be something like the state or province that an individual is from, the department that they're in, the company that they're part of, or they might consist of custom attributes that we define. So if we select custom attribute, you notice down here step two is editing the condition. The custom attribute, let's say if we click specified, let's say we put team leader as one of the custom attributes and we click OK. So now when users have custom attribute one equaling team leader, that individual then will be part of the dynamic distribution group. Now if we click preview, we notice that no one has that custom attribute. We say OK. Let's go back to the Exchange Management Console and let's select User 2. And you notice right here on the General tab, there's the option Custom Attributes. If we select that, for Custom Attribute 1, if we type in team leader, which is something that we would do for all team leaders perhaps, then we would go back and say OK. And if we go back to the new dynamic distribution group and click preview, now you notice that the dynamic distribution group will contain user2. And that's because we defined the custom attribute for user2. So you might say, well that seems like a bit much. I think I'll stick with state or department or company. But if you really want to take advantage of dynamic distribution groups, then you're going to work with custom attributes. So we see that we have the conditions in place, so we click Next. And we have the configuration summary, we click New. And now it's completed. So here's our dynamic distribution group. At any time we can go into the properties. And we can make some modifications here. For example, if we wanted to change the conditions, we can select the Conditions tab and we can add or remove or change some of the conditions that we have in place for the Dynamic Distribution Group. It's best if we don't try to overcomplicate the conditions that we establish, because if we do that and we click Preview, we might find that we have no one in the Dynamic Distribution Group. So let's remember to keep this simple. And we hope you found that informative. We'll see you in the next lesson.